Welcome back. So let's start with writing something new here by adding some dummy data or some dummy entries which we output as a list of well weather data like you saw in the completed app at the beginning. Now for this to, to happen, for this to, to show something, um, we first need to create a couple of components or two components to be precise. We need our list component, which holds the overall list of weather items. And of course, each weather item is a separate component. So we have this weather item component. To store all this, I will create a new folder in my dev folder, which I call weather. And this is a good practice to separate the parts of your application by their function. So we're not having a folder of components, interfaces, and whatever, but we're having all these parts in a single folder and restructured if necessary there, but in a single folder which is named by the function and which well, is grouped by the function. So here a weather folder. And the first thing I want to do here is I will create a new file which will be called weatheritem.component.ts and this file will hold the, my weather item component. The file naming convention here is to first have, well, the name of our component or whatever we're holding in this file, and then a dot, and then what, it, what type of class or what, what we actually have in this file, in this case a component, so that we're going to transform this class into a component with the component metadata, and we're indicating that this file will hold a component by naming it weatheritem.component. Well, TS is just the extension for TypeScript. So this is my weatheritem component file, and I will create a new class by writing export class weatheritem component. And this syntax here is, well, class is just a keyword in TypeScript to create a new class, and export makes it available outside of this file. And of course, we need this functionality because we don't only want to use this component in this file, but we want to use it in other files. And by writing export, we're making this component or this class available outside of this file too. Then I will add my metadata and I do this by writing app com add component, then parentheses, and then curly braces. Now I could auto import this here in my IDE WebStorm, by the way, but I will for now do it manually so that you can follow along nicely. I will import component in curly braces, this is the name of the module I'm going to import, from angular2 slash core. This is the import I need to be able to use this add component metadata because this metadata is defined in our Angular 2 package. Then the first thing I'm going to set up here is my selector and I'm going to call this weather item. Now you should make sure to choose a selector which is not only unique within your app but probably unique within, well, the world so that it doesn't interfere with a default HTML tag, of course, and that it might, doesn't interfere with any possible third-party package you might add to your application in the future, so that it is really unique. Therefore, a great way to ensure this is to, well, prefix it with my, for example. But in this case, I'm not going to because, well, whatever item should be fairly unique. I'm not including any third-party packages, so this should be fine. The next thing I set up here, or the next thing I configure in this metadata, is the template. So the HTML code, which will actually get rendered to the screen. Notice that I use double backticks here to be able to write a string over multiple lines. This is a ES6 feature, but it's also available in TypeScript and will be compiled to run fine in, well, older browsers or in current browsers too. Inside this template, well, I will output my component, my, my weather item, and this should be, well, an article, article default HTML element. 
And inside this article, I will have two columns and I already created the styles here. And of course you will find these styles in the GitHub repository too. Basically, I do have two columns. As I said, I set them up like this. And this currently it's just a little bug here in WebStorm that I have to re-indent this manually. And in the first column, I will have the, well, the city name. And then I want to have you know, a paragraph where I kind of have like the weather, like let's say clouds. This will get a CSS class of info. And I'm writing normal HTML code here. So if you're coming from React, for example, this is not JSX. I don't have to write class name here. This is really normal HTML code. Next thing is here in my second column. I want, this will be to the right of my web item, this will be the temperature. And here I want to have a span, which well says like 39 degrees Celsius, or 32 maybe. And I should also get a class, which I will call temperature. And as I said, I already defined these CSS classes and the appropriate styling in my SCSS files here. For now, this is everything I'll do here. This is my weather item. Next, I will create a new component, my list. I will call this weatherList.component.ts and, oops, let me zoom in a bit. And I will again export my class, which will, called, will be called weatherList component. Again, I will add the component metadata. This time I will use my auto import here. As you can see, my import was added at the top by WebStorm. And I will use or will add a selector here too, which will be called Weber list. And of course, also a template. Every component needs a template because components are there to display stuff. Here, I will have a section Again, re-indent this. This section will also get a class, weather list, which I already defined. And here I will use my weather item component inside this section. And now we're almost ready, but this won't work because now Angular 2 would well see this tag here. And yes, we have defined it as a selector here, but it by default doesn't scan all our components if it finds a selector which matches this, but we have to tell it which directives and components are directives. Remember this, they are just directives with a view. So if we use any directives in this template, we have to define it here to tell Angular 2, hey, we are using some directives in this code, be aware of that and then scan these directives which we specify for their selectors and transform this code appropriately. So here we'll add a new metadata configuration, directives, which is an array. And here I just specify the types of directives I'm using. So here, weather item component, which is just the name of this class, weather item component. I'm just using this, not as a string, just as a type. And also I have to add an import at the top where I import my weather item component module, which I exported here from, well, my weather item component file without the file extension. So just weather item dot component. And it's in the same directory as this file. Therefore I have dot slash to indicate, well, that it is in the same directory. Now Angular 2 is able to find this weather item and render the template we defined here. If we have a look at our application, we don't see anything though. Because, well, we're not loading it. Here in my app component, I still only have my header. Here, of course, I want to have my, oops, my weather list. And I will again add this to my directives area here, 
Weber list component, again also add the import. And now if I save this, you can see we got this working. And what you also see is that the styling is not really applied here. This is because I style my Weber item in this Weber item SCSS file. But in my index.html file, I'm only importing my app CSS or as they compile to just the same files, my app CSS, SCSS file here. So, well, sidebar is not imported anywhere and the Weber item is not imported anywhere. Well, sidebar isn't needed as of now, but Weber item holds the styling I want to apply to my Weber item here. Therefore, I will add the import here by adding a new metadata, which is called style, not styles, style URLs. This takes an array of strings and here we just set up all the URLs leading to style sheets, which should, which hold styles, which should be applied to this code, to this component. And that's important. The styling by default in Angular 2 will only be applied to this component. So if we style articles and we have other article tags and other components, they won't take the styles we set up here because again, these styles only apply to elements or to code inside the template of this item, of this component. So here I have to provide a path to my CSS file, which will be Weber item CSS source as CS source CSS Weber item CSS. We can see this here source CSS Weber item CSS. So now if I save this and it reloads, you can see that now we get the styling we want. The last thing I'm missing here is a CSS class here, which is called Weber element, which now finishes the styling. So this is how we create our custom components how we make them, how we nest them in each other, make them work together in this way, and how we add some styling to them. Now in the next video, we will have a look at how we can output multiple such Weber items. See you there, bye.